Yo, 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 it's your boy, the insurance junkie, your fiduciary fella, the all-star advisor of Alonzo Hall, and I've returned today with another ADH Wealth Solution. Today, we'll begin to discuss fulfilling all of your financial needs. To contribute to channel growth, the links are in the description. To schedule an appointment of your own, or to purchase life insurance directly up to $1 million with no medical exam and an instant decision, my information is in the description. Lastly, make sure you hit that like, drop a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're made aware every time I release new content. And as always, share, share, share. And now, here's our next feature. Yo, 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 it's your boy, the insurance junkie, your fiduciary fella, the all-star advisor, Alonzo Hall, and I've returned today to whap and tap on your head with another ADH wealth solution. Today's article is entitled ETF versus mutual fund. It depends on your strategy. A January 7th, 2022 article by Michael Lachini for Charles Schwab. Before we go in, ladies and gentlemen, make sure to hit that like, drop a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're made aware every time I release new content. And as always, share, share, share. Lastly, to contribute to channel growth, to purchase life insurance directly up to $1 million with an instant decision and no medical exam, or to schedule a one-on-one appointment with a licensed financial professional, the links are in the description as we proceed to give you what you need. Investors looking for diversification often turn to the world of funds. Exchange traded funds, ETFs, index mutual funds, and actively managed mutual funds can provide broad, diversified exposure to an asset class, region, or specific market niche without having to buy scores of individual securities. The challenge, however, lies in narrowing down your options. Do you choose an ETF that tracks an index, such as the S&P 500, or a low-cost index mutual fund that does the same? Or perhaps a fundamentally weighted index ETF that may improve a portfolio's overall risk-adjusted performance? Or maybe a mutual fund with stellar management? The answer depends on your goals and needs. Before you decide on the mix that's right for you, Let's look at the benefits and potential drawbacks of each type of investment. This is why it's very important to stop talking to your best friend because he has a Fidelity account or a Vanguard account and it works for him. Just because he has a Fidelity or Vanguard account that works for him and you guys are friends and maybe even in the similar annual income range, you guys don't live in the exact same house together because your rents and things are different. And you don't drive the exact same car because your preferences in car are different. Even though they may be similar, they're still different. Maybe you guys have the exact same year, make, and model car, but you have a different trim to it. Um, Maybe you like to drive fast and he likes to drive slow. Things like that. So you really want to sit with a financial professional to actually get what's for you. So let's look. ETFs. ETFs trades like stocks and are primarily passive investments that seek to replace the performance of a particular index, although actively managed ETFs are also available. A passive management style often results in lower expense ratios than those charged by actively managed funds. Some passive ETFs charge less than a 0.05%, with some even charging 0.0%. That's a sizable advantage over actively managed funds that charge an average of 0.66%, according to Morningstar. Passive ETFs also tend to be tax efficient, in part because tracking an index usually doesn't require frequent trading. And ETFs have a structural ability to minimize the capital gains they have to distribute. Historically, investing in ETFs has meant paying trading commissions every time ETF shares were bought or sold. But at Schwab and several other brokerages, listed ETFs now can trade commission-free. Consider investing in an ETF if you trade actively. Intraday trades, stop orders, limit orders, and short selling are all possible with ETFs, but not with mutual funds. You want niche exposure. 
ETFs focus on specific industries or commodities can give you exposure to that particular market niche. Niche investing often isn't possible with index mutual funds, though some actively managed niche funds might be available. You want tax efficiency. Both passive ETFs and index mutual funds are more tax efficient than actively managed funds. In general, ETFs can be even more tax efficient than index funds. Potential drawbacks in an ETF include some have large big bid slash ask spreads. When you purchase or sell ETF shares, the price you are given may be less than the underlying value of the ETF's holdings, the NAV or net asset value. The discrepancy called the bid slash ask spread is often minuscule, but for niche ETFs that don't get a lot of trading activity, the spread can be wide. And watch out for fee creep. Some ETFs use fee waivers to temporarily offer lower expense ratios to investors, termed the net expense ratio. Although these waivers are often extended, the fund sponsor may decide to allow the waiver to expire. If that's the case, the expense ratio will increase from the net amount to a higher gross amount. Investors can find the net gross and fee waiver expiration date, if applicable, in the ETF prospectuses. Again, why it's not good to invest in what your buddy invests in unless you get the prospectus uh, and have your risk tolerance. Mutual funds. Mutual funds are generally bought directly from investment companies and instead of from other investors on an exchange. Unlike ETFs, they don't have trading commissions, but they do carry an expense ratio and potentially other sales fees or loads. Index mutual funds. Like most ETFs, index mutual funds are considered passive investments because they mirror an index. They can also be a low-cost way to invest. Many have annual expenses of less than 0.10%. A few scenarios where an index fund may be a better option than an ETF. You can buy an index mutual fund that has lower annual operating expenses. Don't assume ETFs are always going to be the lowest cost option. You may be able to find an index fund with lower costs than a comparable ETF. The ETF is thinly traded. As we covered earlier in the potential ETF drawbacks, you may have to consider the size of the bid-ask spread of a low-volume ETF before purchasing it. Mutual funds, by contrast, always trade at the net asset value without any bid-ask spreads. An index fund's drawbacks are it will never outpace the market. Since index funds are tied to the performance of an index, they'll never be able to beat a top-performing actively managed fund. Index funds follow the tortoise's slow and steady wins the race philosophy, and as a result can't give you that thrilling short-term market-beating performance an actively managed fund might. You have no control over holdings. An index fund might not include a company or set of companies you like or believe will perform well. Conversely, companies you may not like might be included in an index. You have no control over the individual holdings of an index fund. You have no downside protection. While an index fund like the S&P 500 has proven to be a relatively sound long-term investment, you are still at the mercy of the market. And when the market takes a downturn, so does your index fund. Unless you're in an index universal life, but that we'll talk about later. Actively managed mutual funds. The investments in an actively managed mutual fund are selected and managed by a portfolio manager or multiple managers who are often supported by a team of research analysts. Active managers build a portfolio that reflects their strategy and outlook. For example, in rough markets, active managers can play defense by selling more speculative or risky assets and adding more conservative investments. Actively managed funds are typically more expensive than ETFs or index funds, in large part to compensate management. Consider investing in an actively managed mutual fund if you want a fund that could outperform the market. The main reason people invest in actively managed funds is the potential that they might beat their benchmarks, though most aren't able to do so consistently. Additionally, 
Active management with a specific strategy may complement index funds in a portfolio. For example, some managers aim to reduce downside risk and volatility. You are investing in a less efficient part of the market. Some markets are considered to be highly efficient meaning the businesses or markets are so popular and information is so quickly and widely distributed that there isn't much opportunity for active managers to add value. Large cap U.S. stocks are an example of an efficient market segment. Emerging market stocks or high yield bonds are less efficient markets where deep research and a proven strategy could pay off. Potential drawbacks of an actively managed fund they could underperform the market. This is the flip side of an actively managed fund's potential to beat the market. There's also the potential that it can underperform versus the market. They tend to have higher fees. As the name would suggest, actively managed funds are, well, actively managed. And those managers will be taking their fee with every adjustment they make to the fund. They are generally less tax efficient. Actively managed funds tend to have a higher tax cost than index funds because as a manager liquidates and purchases investments in an attempt to beat the market, capital gains are realized more frequently, and those are taxed. The more activity in a fund, the more those taxes add up. So that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you hit that like, drop a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're made aware every time I release new content. And as always, share, share, share. Lastly, to contribute to channel growth, to purchase life insurance directly up to $1 million with an instant decision and no medical exam, or to schedule a one-on-one appointment with a licensed financial professional, the links are in the description. With that being said, wipe ass. Work in progress every day and see success. Salute, salute, salute. Hey, folks. This last video was sponsored by my company, where we help people like you to reach their financial goals. We do this through a simple conversation where we help to identify and then protect your lifestyle. And then we implement a plan. The process starts at about an hour. So if you want more information or you want to schedule a consult, contact me via the information in the description box. And Let's talk and see if we're actually a great fit for each other. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, when people challenge you, they don't challenge you to challenge you, but they challenge you to challenge you. Accept the challenge. Thank you and enjoy life.